TV's Jennifer Burke joins us live this morning at the Occupy Toronto site. And Jen, we know the protesters there spent the weekend going through plans, scenarios, uh, trying to you know get ahead of what the ruling uh, will be. And we now have that decision. Yes, we do indeed, Jackie. And just a few minutes ago, Judge uh, Superior Justice David Brown ruled that indeed these protesters who have been here for five weeks will have to leave. And I'm joined by one of the protesters now who is just hearing that news for the first time, uh, Vandad Kardar. What's your feeling right now? Well, I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest. Uh, I would think that the justice would uh, abide by the Charter of Rights and uh, have a little bit more sympathy. We are an on a grassroots movement. Uh, we're very impassioned. We feel like our uh, rights as citizens are at times coming under threat. Uh, we're here to defend them. Uh, I guess now the onus is on the police and how they respond. Uh, we're hoping that they respond in a peaceful manner, uh, sorry, a peaceful manner, and that they don't use excessive force. Uh, we personally are committed to nonviolence, um, but we are still going to fight the decision one way or another. And how are you going to fight that? You say you're ready to defend it. How? Uh, well, there are some people who are not willing to be arrested, and uh, for all, from as far as my information goes, they're either not here or they're going to be leaving really soon. But the ones who stay uh, are doing so at their own risk, so we're going to try to basically avoid arrest ourselves, but at the very least uh, sort of hold the line as far as as long as we can so that others can get away and avoid being arrested. Some would say that you have had five weeks here, you've uh, set up tents, you've stayed overnight, you've occupied, for <laughs> lack of a better word, and you have made your point, and it, it is, there, there may be a constitutional right to freedom of speech, but there's no constitutional right to housing in a public park. Uh, that's very true. Uh, from the beginning, though, our, our agenda was not specifically about a park or, or be living in a park. That's not really our issue here. Uh, the park sort of serves as a platform to launch our opinions and to rally and to uh, plan, plan actions. Uh, I think what's important is that the standard of protest has now changed. It used to be that if you had an issue to protest, you'd get your signs and you'd march around a little bit, you'd make your point as you're saying, and then you'd go home for all intents and purposes. But now, uh, if you have issues, which we all do, we have a wide range of issues, uh, the standard for us now, we feel, is that we're going to continue and build momentum 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until we actually see some sh social change. And Vanded, I will say, you're, you're a, one of the faces of Occupy Toronto. You're not a homeless person, you're not transient. You have a job, you're educated. Uh, why are you here? Well, uh, I think that uh, those who are privileged should always uh, be well aware of those who aren't and uh, do what they can to give a voice to those who don't have a voice and to defend uh, basic democracy. I mean, yes, I have a job, many of us have a job, some of us don't. Um, some of us are at risk of losing their jobs, either because of the economy or voicing our opinions, mm -hmm. uh, and basically to show solidarity. Uh, yeah. I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And there you have it, Jackie. I will tell you that I took a walk through uh, the protest camp this morning. Not a big police presence at all. Uh, very quiet, in, as a matter of fact. And as the news filters out, I'm not hearing anything behind me necessarily. So we'll, we'll take a walk around and see what happens. A lot of tents still here. Um, not a lot of them seem to be occupied at this moment. Also, one other thing to keep in mind is uh, the church here, St. James Cathedral. There was some talk that the protesters would ask it for sanctuary. Right. But my understanding is that that is not going to happen. That is not a viable option. So we'll just wait and see over the next uh, few minutes, few hours, uh, what the actual uh, police presence will be and what the city's next move will be in actually evicting the people who have set up home here for the time being. And just Back quickly, Jennifer, do we, do we have a sense of how quickly police might respond or we're just waiting to, to in fact, watch for that presence to arrive if it does arrive shortly? Yeah. yeah. I, again, when I walked through the camp this morning, really, I saw no police at all. I think they're uh, keeping a uh, uh, careful distance, perhaps hoping cooler heads will prevail, waiting to see what the protesters themselves will do if some are indeed uh, starting to pack up. I don't see any evidence of that either right now. So I, I wouldn't say that the atmosphere is charged here uh, at any point right now. But uh, again, we'll see uh, what happens in the next few hours or so when the eviction notices have now been enforced by mm -hmm. that court rule and uh, see what unfolds. We will check back with you. City's Jennifer Burke with the latest on the situation with Occupy Toronto.